We have been grumpy for long enough. I'm calling it, we are starting afresh today. Yes, we made it through the night. Well, what a difference a day makes, my goodness. Fingers crossed we don't have to lose the pizza. It's good as new, you can't tell it. You got dragged behind us for several miles. And here, Ian shines. This is his moment. We can do this all the way to Marquesas, this would be nice. Well, today is the day that we hoped would never come. It's a great sadness that I have to announce. Last time on Red Seas, we finally said goodbye to the doldrums as the wind reappeared and we could enjoy sailing again. The calm conditions didn't last long though, and we were soon battling some of the biggest lightning storms we've ever seen at sea. After a long and terrifying night with winds of over 40 knots, we were relieved when the sun came up and the weather calmed down a little. We had to do some emergency maintenance on our leaking escape hatch, and then we spotted a fishing boat on the horizon who seemed to be tracking us. There was a slight moment of panic when some strange men approached us in their speedboat, but it turned out they were just offering us some tuna. Now we're halfway to French Polynesia and we're ready for our luck to change. Good news, the swell has died down. Look, look how lovely and flat and calm things are. It's so relaxed on board. There's also no lightning. Yay, no rain, hurrah. What a wonderful day, kind of, as you can see, Super, super cloudy. Uh, we have pulled in a tiny amount of power this morning uh, and this afternoon as well. We, however, are only up to 30% of our battery capacity and it takes us about 50% of our battery to run everything overnight. So we are moving into drastic measures. Um, we don't want to turn off the freezer if we can help it because there's so much food in there that would probably go to waste. But when we installed the freezer, we always intended to cut a little kind of panel in the front of the fiberglass, that means we can access the control panel on the freezer because I think it is just set to maximum, which is why it's been running at minus 25 degrees Celsius. So uh, that's what we're going to do now. We're going to cut into the fiberglass in the front of the freezer and see if we can access that panel and just turn it down a little bit. And then hopefully it'll keep running, keep the food frozen, but not quite so insanely cold because it really doesn't need to be that cold. Somewhere around about here. <laughs> There. So, so scientific. Somewhere around there, there is the uh, front controls for the freezer. It's, I think, a panel about this long, but I can't see how long it is. We're going to have to just cut a door, and then once we cut that door open, we'll take this glass away, and then we should be able to dial back the freezer. Yeah. Does it go all the way to the floor? No. No, because we put the freezer on stilts, so that it was the right height to shut. Oh, I remember now. So, um, so I just had to make a, a random guess as to how wide that control panel might be. Okay. Nice. Slightly short, but hey, it'll do. We have controls. Maybe we could put it to like minus 12? Let's try minus 12. I, I think that sounds great. Okay. We'll Look at all that. these controls we could have had months ago. Should have. If I'd measured it better, we could have had a really neat door there. Well, we'll still have a neat door. We'll just figure it out later on. Okay, so that's the like emergency part one done. We're hopefully using less power on that now and we'll see what that does to the batteries. Fingers crossed we don't have to lose the pizza! And step two of plan save the freezer is basically just to eat everything inside it as quickly as possible. So I've just pulled out some of the mahi that we caught the other day. I'm going to cook that up for lunch. I made a whole ton of meals before we even set off. So we're going to eat one of those tonight. Got some bolognese that I'm just defrosting. And uh, yeah, basically just <laughs> eat. Let's have a party. Why not? because there's literally nothing else we can do other than wait for some sunshine. We've got to eat the ice cream. It's going to go off otherwise. Absolutely. So this one's mine. Where's yours? <laughs> no, we only had space for one tub. It's such a shame. So only one tub of ice cream to get us across the Pacific. It's ridiculous. Who thought this through? <laughs> we've tried to be so good and like ration it. Look, that's all we've eaten so far. But I think we just have to finish it now. Yay, cool. <laughs> this will not be difficult. <laughs> and here Ian shines. This is his moment. Cheers!
It's morning. Yes, we made it through the night. Uh, I just took over from Brownie about an hour ago now, and uh, the sun came up. The clouds are thin. They're not gone, but they're definitely thinner than they were. So we are actually making charge. We're about 200 watts already, and it's only 7 a.m. Yeah, 7.30. So 7.30, making 200 watts of power, which is kind of counteracting the drain over the night. We made it down to, I think, 11% in the end, uh, but we're already starting to pull that back up. So I'm fairly optimistic today we're going to get enough charge. Maybe we can get Starlink back on, and if we get Starlink on, we can get in touch with people and find out about weather, which would be quite a big deal for us right now, because, um, well, as you can see, the swell has died down a bit. So yeah, today is going to be a good day. We've also, to my biggest delight, got the cracking up. So, you know, easy sailing now. We can do this all the way to Marquesas would be nice. I imagine that's how it works. Uh, once you put it up, it stays up. And uh, yeah, we're not perfectly dead downwind yet. The wind is still coming from the south a little bit, hence it flaps. But uh, yeah, we're holding, I think, of course, we're about 160-ish to the wind. And that's taking us just a little bit north of west which is fine because we've actually gone further south than we intended. We, we originally said we'd only go as far as four degrees south. We've actually been down more close to six degrees south the last few while. So we can afford to kind of drift back up a bit if we have to, but we're doing it very, very slowly. So yeah, all being well, the wind will shift around. The sun will finally peek through these light clouds. Yeah, it's been tough the last couple of days. Kind of nerve wracking when you realize how much you need electricity to keep going. A difference a day makes my goodness we have it's been like cloudy all day but the sun has been just poking through enough that our solar panels have been like trickling up and we're now at the mighty old number of 43 percent charge which on any other day would feel like oh that's not very much but now we know we can get through if we're on 30 percent when the sun sets and we go like minimal power we know we can reach the morning so it's like oh my goodness such celebration we can actually I feel like I'm relaxing and actually enjoying the sail again. It's ridiculous. How are you doing? Are you enjoying Smile Day, as I'm calling it? Smile Day, yeah. I'm doing well because there's blue sky. I know. Like, I feel like we haven't seen that in a while. You think when you're running across the tropics, it should be kind of sunshine all the time, but it's just been horrible heavy cloud. Whereas <gasps> today we've had, I think the Kraken's been up the whole day. Yeah, we put it up at six o'clock this morning. And it's now, the sun's about to set and we'll take it down five, again. Five, six o'clock so at night. We've so. been like, the last few days, we've been dreaming, like pulling ourselves along to keep ourselves positive. We're like, you know, one day we will be able to fly the spinnaker one and it'll day, be wonderful. One day the wind will turn to actually go the direction everyone talks about the trade winds going <laughs> east to west. And maybe eventually the swell will even come across towards oh our goodness. stern instead of our port side but we're almost there yeah yeah it's... we're definitely it's we're not quite there in the sweet spot but we're, we're close so enough close. that it's like oh oh there is hope in the world again we might actually enjoy the rest of the crossing and yeah. not have to hand steer for two weeks now that we're we well, at least today made power and we if did. it stays blue skies although it's looking a bit ominous behind us but if it stays blue then tomorrow we can maybe make it up to like 70. Yeah, I think it's going to be cloudy for another few days, but we're like, if we can just edge our way back up to like, you know, not so terrifying battery level, then we'll survive. And then we get the fishing lines in and then we'll be happy. Yay, life can resume. Brainy won't let me fish uh, at the moment until we turn off the freezer. <laughs> we're just eating so much food out of the freezer now just to, uh, A, so that I don't cry too much if we do have to turn the freezer off and all the food goes bad, and B, so that we can make space so that you can stop whinging about wanting to fish. <laughs> That's it. We have been grumpy for long enough. I'm calling it. We are starting afresh today. I have had a shower. I found clean, dry clothes because like, it's been raining so much that it feels like everything we own is soggy. Um, there's a wind alarm going off, which I'm not going to let annoy me. Uh, we've actually set the lines up for the spinnaker just in the hope that maybe things will calm down a little bit. The swell is not too bad. Um, it's just kind of coming off our back quarter here, but it's the waves aren't big, they're just much closer together than we were expecting. So maybe every five or six seconds. So everything is a little bit wobbly and we're hoping if we can turn and run with the waves, fly the spinnaker for a bit, then things might calm down. 
Either way, we're going to be positive today. We're going to enjoy this crossing, even if it kills us. Well, I'm pleased to announce that I think our luck has finally changed. The sun's come out, we've got blue sky, solar panels are charging, spinnaker's flying like a beaut. We're making like seven or eight knots through the water and even the waves have got in on the action. They have calmed down, but they've also moved around. So they're coming much more from behind us now. So we're not kind of like wobbling all over the place and falling over and bumping stuff. So oh, we're actually smiling again. We're enjoying the crossing. We are not just whiling away the hours and counting down the minutes until we arrive, which is not how we wanted to spend the next two weeks. So we're just swapping over at the sunrise shift and we've got some visitors. What a way to wake up, huh? I know, I'm wondering, do you think they're just waking up too? And this is like, oh, morning exercise. There's do you think they've been with. here every morning and we've just missed them? There's a chance. <laughs> they're quite different to ones we've seen before as well. Like they're quite large, but they're, um, their fins are really thin. They're uh, speed skater dolphins. Speed skater dolphins, that makes sense. That's why they're wearing the goggles. <laughs> I love it. They're all like swimming in pairs. They've got their little dance partner. And then every so often you get like eight in a row and they all jump out at the same time. It's like synchronized swimming. It's beautiful. Okay, so what are we doing? Okay, so this is our beloved bowsprit, which is the one that we took off a sunken boat. Uh, however, the base plate that we used to mount it on the crossbar is where it gave up. It's just the rivets pop. So we need to put them all back on, which it's easy at eight knots downwind and swell. At least we're downwind. Yeah, it, the only reason it came off, so we had this, oh, I've taken it inside, we had this really thin power cord that we'd used as like a, a support line. So when it wasn't in use, it was just hanging from a power cord. And then a decent wave came up on the bows and just grabbed the pole and pulled it under the boat. So it literally levered itself underneath and we found it, uh, actually, I think it was in that 40 knot squall when we came forward. Yeah. And it was literally hanging by the, uh, they're called the bob stays, the two sort of diagonal lines. Uh, you'll see in a minute. And it's just bouncing underneath the boat in the swell and in the, in the speed that we were going was like eight knots, nine knots. So it was um, hammering around back here somewhere. So we kind of fished it back, to, back out and just strapped it down for now, but now we can put it back on. Lesson learned, we will uh, have to secure it properly on the uh, spinnaker halyard next time and make sure everything is tensioned, but you live and learn. We're not admitting that it happened twice, are we? Slightly thicker paracord. can't tell it got dragged behind us for several miles. Exactly, no one will ever know because it's a well know. kept secret. If that's one thing that, because we do all of our projects ourselves on a shoestring, it came off a sunken boat. So it's used to being underwater and if we'd lost it, we'd just have to find another sunken boat somewhere and take yeah, it Yeah, that's true. Boat. It's yeah, not it's quite like as painful. We've recycled our boat. We're constantly recycling and uh, What's the upcycling? We're upcycling. It was a compression post. It was one of these. Yeah. And then we turned it into one of those because it came off a slightly shorter boat. And it like totally looks like it fits. It's great. It's it's the perfect measurements, I it's think. It's amazing. I feel like Indy's happier now as well. She's got her nose back on her face. Well, today is the day that we hoped would never come. It's a great sadness that I have to announce. The Kraken is dead. That's right, our beautiful... <laughs> beautiful, our lovingly crafted old tatty 
broken and pinhole spotted spinnaker um, is sadly no more. We had such a perfect day yesterday. We had about 15 knots apparent all day. Spinnaker flying, absolutely beautiful. Making great westerly progress, making kind of seven, eight knots of boat speed. And then before we knew it, a squall was on top of us. So we kind of ran out to the front to bring the sock down before the rain started. We didn't quite make it before the rain. And we were literally, I think about four seconds away from releasing one of the guy lines that would have forced the sail to collapse and then for us to be able to sock it. And the wind just climbed from, I think, 15 knots apparent to 24. And it ripped. <laughs> it ripped really good. Almost the whole way across from the left-hand side of the sail, horizontal line across to the right-hand side, almost all the way. It was almost completely detached top and bottom. Actually, if that had happened, I have no idea how we would have got it down. Thankfully, it was still joined at the starboard corner near the bow. Um, somehow we managed to sock that. Um, I had to pull in all of the, the ripped bit off the bottom that was now in the sea, but we managed to get it all up on deck. But um, yeah, with, with still about 1,500 miles to go, that is a real bummer because we're going so much slower now. We've been making like, yeah, seven, eight knots with the spinnaker. And now that we're back to Genoa only, we're going like three, maybe four if we're lucky. So 10 days might be about to become 20. And that kind of hurts. So we'll need to fake, figure out uh, a way to repair it or come up with another plan. Um, either way, we just need to keep moving, keep going. I mean, I guess Contiki got there just with the current on their raft, so uh, ultimately that's what we'll do. <laughs> oh no, just when everything was starting to go so well. <sighs> it's a bit crispy, I don't think we can eat this one. Uh, they stink. They really do. And they're starting to stain the deck as well. Oh, uh, what? Oh, I skinned it! <laughs> Okay, we're going to um, take a look at the spinnaker and see what condition it's in because last night we just literally bundled it as fast as we could into the locker. So yeah, I've got no idea what it looks like and if it is even vaguely repairable. Here we go. Moment of truth. I have to come up with a plan of where we put this. <laughs> I know, I sort of want to just move that out of the way and pull the end up. Do you think that's doable? I don't want the whole thing to like blow away. <laughs> well, there's a rip. Oh, look how sad it is. Look at that. Oh, they worked so hard. They did, they worked very hard. Oof. Yeah, like right off the end. Look at that. So I'm pretty sure it's not just ripped along a seam, which would have been ideal, but I think it's uh, like a horizontal line parallel to the bottom, but it's kind of hard to tell. Okay, so here's a corner. Oh, so this is the bottom, yeah. Okay, so, I ah, gotcha. So it's ripped the panel. So, it goes this way around, so that's the bottom there, and it is literally just ripped, like a straight line along here. But it doesn't follow at any kind of seam. I mean, I'm gonna give it a try to see if I can fix it, because what's the harm? So my thought was, if that goes straight across the whole way, then essentially cut the last little bit and basically make the whole spinnaker like 10 centimeters shorter or put some kind of a patch in over the top of the rip. And uh, it's really annoying because I have like an old mainsail that I could use for like sail repairs on the general or the main, but that's way too heavy for this stuff. But I was talking to somebody online for ideas this morning and they said, oh, have you got like a tent on board or a hammock? And I was like, oh, we've got the like stripey hammock in the cockpit that we got from Colombia, but we actually brought with us from Scotland, like an outdoorsy lightweight hammock. And it is probably quite similar to this fabric. So we could make it like an Elmer patchwork kind of situation. And every time it rips, put another bright color on it somehow. Okay, I want to get the rest of it out and see how long the rip is because I don't know bit. if we have enough gaffer tape. <laughs> I don't think we do. <laughs> 
So that's the other side and that is intact, but only just. Rainy's definition of intact and my definition of intact are apparently quite different. I'm pretty sure this rip is literally from clue to clue, so from corner to corner along the bottom and just ripped its way right across. It was amazing because it actually it did sound like it unzipped when it went. It was just a all the way across and then it was flapping weird and went in the sea. It was a big mess. But um, I don't know if Brandy wants to play with Look it. Look at this. Nice to fix this bit, I would say, is the end of the rip. And the corner is perfectly intact. <laughs> oh, she just put it back up there then. <laughs> Look how far across it got, all the way to that vertical seam there. It literally the entire width of the spinnaker, which I don't know, is like nine meters or something. And it's just taken that much off the bottom. One meter. We could just lose a meter and hem it there. So yeah, just need to decide whether to um, overlay the two parts of the tear Ooh. and sew them or glue them back on or whether to go patchwork jazzy colors. We have no idea if this thing is just a bag of rags. Moment of truth. Look at that beauty. We'll just lift it and find out. Ooh, there she goes. Whoa. The Kraken. <laughs> and the Kraken is flying. It's like a bungee rope. <laughs> this has to be one of the most comfortable passages we have ever done. 